Okay, as we go and look at our gold daily chart here, we can see the range that we've been in for the past month or so, really longer than that. Uh, we had a month just right here, but when you go even further back and see the bounce that we had in here to come up with support, that goes all the way back to April. And now we've made our way back up to our resistance level. Uh, we can see the good news is that as we moved up, and crossed into the, this, this auction area, we can see that the volume increased with that. And, uh, uh, and the volume, the selling and buying volume is at parity, but we've been waiting and potentially it might happen here, don't know. We can see the buyers maybe starting to cross up. So as the volume's increasing, it has to be buying volume as we move higher. But of course, the reservation you have to have is we can see that we're at the last key resistance price level. Now, when we come over to our hourly, we can see that's what's happening. The price is consolidating. We're getting ready to form a volume resistance up here. This is where volume is accumulating. And we're in the oversold level on our RSI, which matches up with we're approaching resistance. We're starting to get overbought, overbought, not oversold, overbought. And so potentially a pullback is in play. Now, so if gold is moving up, the Inverse relationships should be that dollars going down. Now, particularly on Friday, that, that didn't happen. But in general, it is what we're seeing. So when we go to look at the pound dollar, we see two things. We see the downtrend. We see some wicks of our down channel. We, we wicked it. But more importantly, we see this channel that we've been in for about two, three weeks here. The other thing we see is what? Volume is kind of disappearing. And each time volume comes back is what? Every time we try to push lower, I'm just grabbing a wicks for you. Every time we try to push lower, here we're trying to push lower, the, vo the volume comes in. Every time we try to def defend this lower, the volume's in. And then as we get out of it, volume just hit, uh, kind of deteriorates. Now we're testing that bottom again, and here's our volume again. So buyers are continuing looking for value here at this 1.5945. Buyers are finding value there. But when are we going to really close out of this range? And what we'll see, this two to three week range, we come over to our hourly, and we can see for the most part we've uh, snaked around our long-term moving, moving average, parity. We've snaked around our neutral zone, again, parity. And then when we finally did break into the uh, buy zone, we did get a, a, a you know, a, a move back to uh, the norm, to the neutral. And as we moved up a little bit, we moved back down. So we're seeing parity. And, and why is that? Well, a couple of reasons. First and foremost, we can see that, um, the weakness in the dollar. So as gold is moving up, we can see the dollar moving down. As we said, Friday, the dollar did move up. We also see that the uh, pound dropped on Friday with a little move up. But we also see another thing here, and that is the, the pound um, staying in control almost with a divergence where the pound is moving up and the dollar is moving down, which is why we saw this move up. However, they're both below zero, and that's why we're seeing this parity. So what we need is some catalyst that's going to really get us out of this zone so that we can get into a true buy and sell area. Until then, anytime we do uh, stretch up into a buy or a sell zone, we need to go ahead and take that uh, position. Now, when we move over to the euro dollar, we can see the downtrend line that we're watching. This little pop above the downtrend was a holiday in the states and so not going to count on it too much um, but let's grab our trend line here and let's draw with the wicks and you can kind of see the range that we're watching here and so um, you know the buyers are starting to find value in this 1.41 1.42 price level um, uh, and since we had our push down you know that would say since the buyers are finding value that perhaps we should be looking for a a, uh, a position to go long um, but we can also see that the selling volume is still in control when we come to our hourly chart we can see where we are off of our long-term moving average we are off of the, um, uh, the the neutral zone we are in a buy zone if 
you know, crossing above our second moving average could be interesting. But the thing that's concerning is both of these are below zero. And just fractionally, we had the dollar take control as we move down. And we have a little divergence where the dollar is moving up and the, uh, the euro is moving down. But they're both in the negative zone. So we may see a little choppiness on our daily chart here until one of these clearly takes control and gets back on the positive side. Finally, we have the dollar franc. Of course, we have our long-term downtrend. As a matter of fact, on the daily, let's come over here and you see this little uh, support that was drawn in here. And now, what do you see? We see a range, and that seems to be the theme of the day here, that we have a lot of range. So until this fails, we certainly should be looking at longs down at the bottom, at the support, and we certainly can look at shorts at the resistance area. That's just a natural. Um, uh, but let's take a look over on the hourly, and we can see uh, this is uh, the states had a non-farm payroll, which was very bad, and that is what you're seeing here, the dollar uh, being crushed off of the, that release. And we're getting into the buy zone, which is interesting as we approach the lower side of the, the range that we're in. Uh, but clearly, the franc has taken control, um, which would continue to move lower. Um, the franc is moving above its long, its moving average. The dollar crushed below the moving average. Uh, we are, uh, we we did get a little signal here of an oversold area, um, and that is as we started to level off. So it's going to be interesting to see if we do get a continued push down and what happens at this 0.8318 price level, which has been support for uh, a good month and a half. Right now, we don't have any candidates for our low volatility watch list or our inside bar watch list, so we'll have to keep you abreast as the day moves on. As we continue to talk about what separates winning traders and losing traders, one thing that I often see is that those consistent profitable traders work as hard after the market closes as they do when the market is open. Too many traders show up at the you know the bell of the opening. And, and start trading. They have no plan. They just kind of wing it. You know, sure, you can know trading st strategy. You can know chart patterns. But you still have to have a game plan. You still have to know what you're going to do. Those if-then scenarios. If the market's doing this, then I will do that. If the market is doing that, then I will do this. And so you have to prepare. The only way you can prepare that game plan is to prepare after the, your trading is done. So not, nothing saying that you have to be working all day, but you have to prepare to trade. You can't just show up and trade. Which, again, ties into our philosophy here at DMBFX.com, which is straight nose, uh, to the core trading, no fluff, no uh, banter, just serious, concise, focused, and disciplined trading. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.